Longtime fan of Category 5 Technology TV, Raja Harvey supported us in our Kickstarter campaign in order to get us into this beautiful space back in early 2020. Along with that came the perk to be able to choose his very own topic matter for an episode of Category 5. And Raja chose to learn about our workflow and how we use DaVinci Resolve in order to color grade our video. Now, while color grading sounds a little bit technical, it's really just color correction. It's enhancing your video so that it looks a little bit nicer coming off the camera. So let's jump right into it. Let's jump to the past. Hey, past Robbie. Hey, future me. How's this look? You know, it looks pretty good, but I'm noticing that you're pretty blue. Like we're definitely seeing uh, some blue clipping going on there. Well, I tell you what, it's a good thing I brought this white balance card with me then, right? <laughs> Here, pause the video now and sample that in DaVinci Resolve, okay? So I'm gonna grab the tool to be able to dopple that. Wow, any better? Yeah, it looks fantastic actually with just two mouse clicks, but you're holding up a pretty fancy looking white balance card. What if somebody doesn't have such a thing on hand? You know what, that's no problem at all. I encounter this all the time when I'm doing Zoom interviews. All you have to do is get the person to hold up a white piece of printer paper next to their face. It's flimsy, but it'll do in a bind. Go ahead and undo that last action, Robbie, and sample this, okay? Whoa! There, not bad, eh? No, that looks fantastic, actually. And all you're using is just a standard piece of printer paper. Wow! All right, well, let's dig in just a little deeper into color correction in DaVinci Resolve. So that Doppler on a white piece of paper has cleaned that up really, really well. So you can see the blue is no longer clipping. It's a little bit higher than the red, which is inevitable because I'm wearing a blue shirt and I've got a blue background. So keep that in mind. You don't want this to be level across the board because yeah, there is more blue in that picture. But what I wanna do now is I wanna correct the lighting ever so slightly. It's looking pretty, pretty good right out of the box, but I can bring up the gain and what I wanna watch is that I'm not gonna clip any of these, okay? So by clipping, I mean it's gonna go off of the scopes here. So if I actually bring that up too high, it's gonna be, see what happens to the blue channel there? And it's, it's like it's oversaturated. So I wanna keep these spectrum analyses, analyses? Uh, within this um, scope here. I don't want it to clip outside of that, uh, but I wanna bring it up so that the lighting is a little more. See, if it's too dark, it's gonna look like that. And you can see how that affects the, those graphs. So I can visually see over there that bringing up, so watch the blue there, how I'm just letting it touch the edge of the scope. I'm not gonna go any further than that because I don't wanna clip it. So now if I wanted to, I can see that the, there is very little green compared to blue and I can experiment with, okay, if I wanna just grab the green a little bit and just bring that up, but I can see that's actually skewing the color, but I wanna you know, see what that does. So see how the, the green, uh, and I'm looking over here at the spectrum analysis. Um, so how that affects that. So I can line things up so that everything is just right. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. My offset is gonna bring those down a little bit into the darker end of the spectrum so that I can expand them a little bit further if I need to. Uh, but you don't wanna overkill it because you don't want it to look like it's been overly enhanced or digitized but I can correct certain aspects of lighting. Now, lighting is pretty good in our studio, uh, but you know, I, I get a lot of glare off my forehead and stuff like that, so <laughs> I can correct that here. Okay, so next step is actually to um, correct some of the details in my flesh. So, and this could be not only um, my actual skin, um, like if I have blemishes, for example, pimples or something like that. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a red spot on my forehead here. Um, so I can correct that as well. Uh, but it can also be to uh, compensate for some of the graininess of your camera. You can see that the actual camera itself is a little bit pixelated. So what I'm gonna do, observe that spot on my forehead, uh, in particular, um, some of the some of my goatee here, you can see a, a red spot there on my chin, uh, which looks like a, a blemish on my face. Uh, there's another one right on this side here. So let's let's see what we can do to correct that. And and we're not getting into this is not a de facto um, how to color correct in DaVinci Resolve. There are tons of those 
on YouTube. So consider this more how we at Category 5 Technology TV, because that's what this series is. How does Category 5 whip out episode after episode and how do we make it look as good as we do and sound as good as we do? That's what this series is covering. So consider this as how Robbie um, color corrects and enhances the video for Category 5. It's not the de facto this is how you use DaVinci Resolve, so consider that. Okay, so first of all, I want to have a parallel node, which is gonna be Alt-P, and this is going to allow me to now modify things on this node uh, without affecting the actual, uh, the main video node. So, what I want to do here is I'm going to add a circle um, window here, and so I'm gonna drag this up over my face, I'm gonna add some feathering on the edge, see how that works? Uh, and then I'm gonna bring it into my face. There we are. Now I have a really good advantage here at Category 5 Technology TV in that I am usually very stationary. See that? I'm just barely leaving the frame. So what I do need to do though is I do, I do leave the frame and I move over there. So I am gonna have to do some tracking. So let's bring up our tracking tool and I'm gonna hit play from the beginning and that's actually going to track my face. There we go, so it's, it's following my face. Now, I'm not happy with the way that it's, uh, the way that it's tracking there. You, you see what, it's, what it actually did is it kind of went askew. So I'm gonna change so that it, it does not rotate, it does not enter 3D space, uh, and it does not zoom because the camera is stationary. All I want it to do is uh, and let's turn off tilt. Let's just go with pan and let's try that. So I've undone. Now I'm going to hit trace and see now it's just moving left and right. Did you see that? So ignore the fact that it changes to the computer shot. So now that my tracking is done and I'm just moving back and forth here and you can see that it's following my face. So when I go far to the side there, that tracks my face. So. Uh, now that the tracking is done. So if I go back to my circle tool here and I want to just make sure that it is my face that is selected. So if I bring down the gain, you can see, yes, it is only impacting my face because we don't want to make any changes to the background right now because what I'm actually doing is just improving blemishes and only on my face. So again, observe that uh, red spot on my forehead. And if I just bring down, if you look here, mid slash detail, I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit and watch what happens to my head. Look at that, it's just like a nice subtle airbrushing. You don't wanna go too far and yet I have. Uh, let's bring that up just a little bit. And you can see that the detail is just a little bit softened, but it looks natural. So now with that tracking happening, if I press play, it's actually going to do that feathering um, and it's gonna follow my face. I can still see the forehead thing, that's not, a, not too bad of a thing. If I wanted to, because that's a red spot, and this is gonna be different for every single video that I produce, but here, yeah, I do have a red spot on my head for some reason. So I could actually create another parallel node and I could create another circle and I could place that circle on that red spot keep the feather and just place it like right there. And let's actually track that red spot. So let's put it right there and follow. Okay, so now I've tracked that red spot, so it's following it. And let's see if we can very gently bring down the red just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab here and pull down the red. So if I pull down too far, watch what happens, see that? Uh, so it's actually, so now if I play that, see it's following and it's <laughs> turning it green. So you don't wanna go down that far, but if you can do it just subtly enough, and yet strong enough that it makes an impact. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not going all out here and spending hours and hours retouching a video. No, I'm doing really simple touch-ups really, really quickly. So now, if we look at that video and let's select our main node, that's a little bit too pronounced. I don't like that. So I'm gonna bring up the red just a bit. Let's see if I can find kind of a happy medium. That looks pretty clean. So now if I press play, 
you can see it's actually following the, the spot and it's following my face. So that whole track is looking a heck of a lot better right out the gate. So again, if I, so let's turn off both of those. So this is the original video and I've only spent a couple of seconds here. So now turn back on both of these and look at the difference. Fantastic. Okay, so next up, here's something that we're going to do for the sake of today's demonstration, but I want you to hold off on this if you want to do multicam shots from a single camera. That's a feature that we're going to be doing next time. Uh, so hold on the vignettes if you're going to be doing that because I've got a trick for you. But because this is a single camera shot, I'm actually going to create a serial node, which is Alt S. And that serial node is going to now have a vignette. So I'm going to click into my uh, window mode and click on a circle. Once again, we love circles. Uh, I got a big round melon of a head, so it works really, really well. Uh, so pretend this is a camera lens. So see, I'm doing this proportionally and I want to bring it out like that and feather the edge. And by grabbing the corner, it's going to be proportional. Uh, so remember that a camera lens being perfectly circular, we want to do that uh, without skewing it too much. So now, if I bring down the gain quite a bit, look at what it does. It turns down the brightness, but now invert that circle. And now we've got this nice vignette around the edge. So if I turn that off, that's what it looks like without, and that's what it looks like with. And that vignette is now applied uh, as a serial node, so it's going to stay there through the whole video. So now if I press play, it now looks like that. So that is very basic color grading. It gives you a couple of tips as far as how to use things like the windows, the, um, the Doppler in order to get the white balance. I always start with white balance. So have a white balance card handy, have something that is pure white handy that you can doppel from. Uh, and then you can kind of take it one step further. You saw the red spot on my head, so I was able to touch that up because that was something that I wanted to do. You might have a pimple that you want to remove and you can just kind of brush that up nice and clean as well. So that's really, really easy. You can apply as many parallel nodes as you want. So if you wanted to kind of feather the face a little bit to remove blemishes um, in general, and then if you had one very pronounced spot, you could create another serial node, uh, a parallel node, pardon me, and remove that spot. So uh, by increasing the feathering on that, it's all very, very simple. It's just a nice little trick to make our YouTube videos look better than they would if they were just coming right off of your editor. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, Linux Tech Show, so that you don't miss out on the next one. And this is a series where I'm showing you how I produce video for Category 5 Technology TV for YouTube. So you don't want to miss out if you are a content creator or an aspiring content creator. I've got some great tips for you over the next several weeks. So thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.